Okay, three, two, one. Hi, guys. Uh, Richard, uh, Victor Echo 2 Delta X-Ray from V2DX Electronic Design here today. Happy to uh, finally get uh, videos on the air. Hopefully, this one is going to be better quality than the uh, last couple ones from the last couple weeks. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, so um, obviously the flood last August really uh, hurt our business and uh, delayed us in uh, moving the products that we introduced uh, at Dayton last year. And uh, we're hoping to uh, get, things, get things really back on track uh, this year. Uh, so everything should work out okay. Um, we're happy that uh, the uh, you know the yt one bt r center two Bluetooth devices are out uh, since last uh, December. Uh, the uh, uh, EM1, uh, uh, no, sorry, EMI and RFI filters, the EF1 and EF2, are out since October. Those are great. Uh, DC filters to eliminate, you know, transients and RF and generator noise and, uh, you know, DC uh, inverter noise or whatever. Uh, so great, uh, great uh, product out also since uh, last October. Uh, the SDR1, uh, well, we had a couple of quality assurance issues, missing jumpers and things, and we're sorry about that. Everything is resolved, everything is documented, and my wife, and my XYL, was officially named uh, QA manager. So uh, if there's a problem now, bitch at her. I know, I know. Uh, she's very good. She's going to be uh, uh, putting uh, really some great efforts and have documented page after page of each product and what to check for. Uh, so, uh, and she, she finds stuff that I don't always think about. Uh, so things are moving along real good. Um, so today, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to introduce the band decoders, which have multiple features. I'll talk about that at the end. Uh, there are band decoder and what a band decoder is. People ask that sometimes. Is we use a lot in HF, but it can also be, be very useful with higher frequencies. Uh, it monitors uh, information from the radio and automatically switches the antenna mostly uh, in most cases not in mine you'll see uh, it switches the antenna over to uh, you know the proper antenna automatically there were multiple different ways using uh, BCD information from Yuzu and stuff like that but uh, what I think is the better approach is to monitor frequency. So what we offer in our band decoders is we can sniff what's going on on the CAP port or the CF port. And automatically when we see the frequency go by, we know it's a frequency and we compare that to a table that you're putting together in our configuration page that you will see in this video. And uh, we switch to the proper relay. Uh, our band decoders are interesting because there's basically three variations. A regular one, simple, one radio, one set of eight outputs. Configure your band frequencies up and down, uh, high or low, and whatever. And the, re, uh, the output uh, for that band. You can have multiple band pointing to a uh, single output, uh, like on in the case of a tri-bander. Uh, for HF 20 meter, 15 meters, 10 meters, well, you configure each frequency range and you always point to the same output, thus pointing to that antenna. Second model is single radio, but dual output, two sets of eight relays. Uh, why? Simply, uh, in more advanced station, you will have both the antennas controlled remotely with a switch box which is at the top of the tower. And you might have in the shack a set of bandpass filters. Well, those bandpass filters don't necessarily match the selection for the antenna. Again, our tri-bander, well, that would point to three separate bandpass filters, 20 meters, 15 meters, 10 meters. 
Okay, so in that case, what's going to happen is, according to the table that you created, the first set of outputs are going to trigger the remote relays, and those are going to point to a single antenna, the tri-band. The second set of outputs for the same frequency, single radio, is going to point to a different bandpass filters according to the band. So you can, you're going to configure those differently. It gives you more flexibility. Other devices that do similar things, they both point to the same thing. So we are uh, trying to, again, as always, trying to advance the technology to your advantage. The third one is the jackpot. Dual radio, dual set of outputs. Okay, eight output each as always. And this can be used as to control one radio and one set of antenna, second radio, second set of antenna, two different radio box or an SO2R 2x6 or 2x8 remote antenna box. It can also be used to control two different sets of bandpass filters, or it can be used just like the previous one to control with a single radio, the, the antenna and the bandpass filters. It's your, it's your choice. Um, the beauty is we offer new features, you know, like uh, blind assistance, uh, which is a blind, uh, blind and deaf assistance, uh, BOA, which is to help operators uh, with slight handicaps with different uh, functionalities. We also offer uh, SDI, software defined interlock. So the first radio, whether it's top one, bottom one, doesn't make a difference. It detects the frequency. Once it has detected the frequency, it locks in and interlocks to that band and that output. Now, whether the configuration on this second radio is the same or different doesn't make any difference. And if it selects an output which is the same band, then we have a problem. Uh, so what we do with SDI is we monitor the first radio to grab a band. And if the second radio tries to grab the same band, we generate an error, generate BOA information for the operators with handicaps, and we prevent the output from coming out on that radio, uh, thus protecting the transmitter and the receiver uh, from affecting one another, even with bandpass filters. Uh, so that's uh, some of the technology. Now, what I'm going to show you today is how we configure the device. It's very simple. It's a private network right now. We're hoping to add features to incorporate, to add it into your network with other functionalities like remote viewing of what uh, the band decoder is doing, things like that. Uh, and uh, right now, what I'm going to show you is just a configuration page and how we get to it. Simply put, using this BC, we're gonna go and select the network for the band decoder, which in Wi-Fi shows up as V2DX band decoder. Once I've got that select and I connect it, it's gonna take a little while because it won't find the internet. Uh, whoop, but I, it's okay. Always when you do a demo, let me just reset it. Okay, it's connecting right now. Beautiful. So it's connected and it found uh, that there was no internet. That's normal. It's a private network. You're just talking to my device, nothing else. Now I'm going to get rid of that screen and I'm going to turn on a browser. Uh, where are you? Uh, here we go. I'm going to turn on Chrome and I'm going to simply call up. 192.168.1.1, which is the page, configuration page. And that page, I'm going to try to make it so that it pops up. I uh, still have to do some digging on that. Uh, but basically, that configuration page has all the instructions, how to configure all the phone numbers, email, and website to for support. Then you have the configuration for, let's say, BOA, uh, LED, buzzer, or both. Basically, what BOA does, it sends out either CW or binary information on what each side is doing. 
the, uh, the other one is basically, do I want to turn on SDI? Yes, I will. And do I want to turn on or off the buzzer? Since BOA is not selected, I'm going to say, yeah, put the buzzer on this way. It's just going to beep. It's not going to send more information than that. Um, being that this demo is an IBD2-BT, which is a dual unit, dual output, uh, I can configure this as an antenna switch, a bandpass filter switch, or an antenna slash bandpass filter switch, which obviously the last one would be a single radio. The first two are dual radio functionalities. So we're going to put this in as an antenna switch. I've got the serial number of the device that's going to be auto generated and showing up there. Once we get all the little bugs fixed on probably ver the second version or third version, we're going to add the configuration of the Wi-Fi over here so that you're able to change the configuration of the device and set it so that it links to your network. And there's going to be a functionality in there. If, in case you make an error, it's going to reset everything, bring it back to this configuration to prevent uh, you being stuck. Uh, my demo is kind of small uh, type over here, but that's fine. Um, next, after that, well, again, we've got a dual unit right now, dual radio. So you're going to have two radio configurations and band configurations in a single uh, single single radio single output you would only have one table on a single radio dual output you would have uh, two uh, tables of frequencies and output but only a single radio <coughs> oh, sorry configuration we support flex icon kenwood yezu and xegu for now uh, we're probably going to add a lot more to that um we support two modes of operation. The sniffer, listen to what's going on, pick the frequency out of the garbage, and react to it. And we support get. Get is basically this unit will go out and request from the radio the information. Well, in get mode, I'm missing a menu here, which would be the timing. Uh, how fast do you want to get the information from the radio? Uh, so we're going to add that. Next after that, obviously, uh, is the information about the frequency and the output. And what's important is we're working with kilohertz uh, instead of megahertz with decimal. We do not support the decimal at this point. We're going to see if we can help that along in later versions. So uh, 160 meter would be from 1.8 to 2 meg. So that's 1800 to 2000. And I select an output, which is a dipole or uh, N-fed on output number one. Uh, I could change this over to, I don't know, 35, 50, or any other frequency that I want. So, and the next one is 80 meter from 3550 to 3800. The output is number two. Uh, 75 meter in this case, which I could have done, you know, I could have simply put 4,000 over here and cover 75 meter. But just for the sakes of this demo, I split them up. Obviously, you notice that the frequency of the higher portion of band 2 must be different from the lower portion of band 3. So I got those changed and adapted. And I go up to, again, antenna number two. So this is a single antenna, which is a dual band antenna, a regular dipole, 80 meter, 40 meters, uh, which everybody almost has at home. So the 40 meter is going to be also on antenna number two. And I've got that antenna covered with those bands. Now, uh, again, all of these are just for, inform for demonstration sakes, but... Let's assume the next antenna, and we don't have work for whatever reason, the next antenna, number three, uh, would be a tri-bander, 20 meter, uh, 15 meter, or 10 meter. Well, I got 20 meter over here. I configured, let's say, and I can move that around. It could be band seven, band eight, whatever. I can move that along uh, as the second half, the 15 meter half of that tri-bander. 
I can move the next one, which is 10 meter. And I could split 10 meter because in FM I've got a vertical. So what I'm going to do is, let's say 28.7. So here I'm going to put, uh, yeah, 28.701 and 29.700 uh, for the FM portion of 10 meter or approximately as antenna number four. Uh, and uh, this one here, what did I just do? Uh, yeah, that's fine. And antenna number three over here, the uh, third portion of the tri-bander. Uh, real fast, I change out the tri-bander. I switch over to a five-band, which has the two work bands. So I just come in, change this to number three, change this to number three, and now I've got uh, four bands and again those frequencies can all be changed the order can be changed it's you do it your way and obviously the last one uh, let's assume I've got a, a vertical that I'm using the same box for to switch to it so the two meter vertical is on this the 10 meter vertical is on that try the five band uh, uh, antenna uh, hit in the upper portion of HF is over here on number three. Uh, that uh, du dual band 8040 dipole is over here, and the infinite antenna is on number one. So you just configured it, and uh, that information automatically goes into the processor and saved into memory. So next time you power up, it's going to be okay. Uh, being that it's again a dual. Uh, I need to configure the second radio. The first one was a flex radio. The, let's assume the second one is an ICOM. And uh, for demonstration sakes, I would just configure the different antenna. And again, uh, what would happen would be, uh, assuming, let's put number three over here, uh, number four for 40 meters separate antennas. Well, if I try to use 40 meter here, and it's already in use on number two over here. Well, SDI, if it's enabled, will kick in and turn around and prevent that from happening. Even though it's different output, even though it's totally different configuration, it compares the frequency band for each and the range that I've put into it. Uh, so that's pretty much it. The only other thing, I'm going to switch over to my cell phone to record. Using my cell phone right now, I've, I'm going to just switch the image over. And what you're seeing is another cell phone being used with the same configuration page. And all the information that we saw before is available now. And if I switch over... Uh, you will see that automatically the page is adjusts itself to uh, the proper uh, width and everything else. I do the same thing on a tablet. Let me just, here we go. Now using a tablet, again, you got all the information under the proper format, proper width. And if I flip the tablet over, all the information gets readjusted according to uh, the new format. Okay, so so that's uh, that's pretty much it. We're back and uh, happy to w being able to take a few minutes before Orlando to, to send you this video. I hope you guys like it. Uh, do ask your local distributor if he's got our products, and if he doesn't, ask him why. And uh, do feel free to uh, help our distributors or help us directly by going to our website at www.v2dx.com. 73.